Hello, this is Jeff Caney from the University of Wisconsin. I'm going to present a couple of cases from our recent webinar. Uh, these are two cases of spontaneous pneumothorax, both secondary. The first is a 63-year-old woman who presented with chest pain and shortness of breath. This PA radiograph shows a small right pneumothorax. The underlying lung parenchyma looks normal. She had a pleural drain placed and uh, her symptoms improved. And then she underwent a CT scan at the chest to look for underlying causes of her pneumothorax. She had no previous past medical history. We can see on the CT her pleural drain is positioned here apically. The pneumothorax is mostly evacuated. But as I go through the lung parenchyma, and I'll zoom up so we can see it a little bit better, you'll notice there's some small cystic spaces scattered throughout. And as we go down, we'll see there's more and more of these spaces. And we'll take a look at the morphology. So for example, here along the fissures, we can see this cyst here is very elongated. If we come down a little bit further, we see another similar elongated cyst. Now on the left, we can see a larger cyst, but also very elongated. These are sometimes called ellipsoid or floppy cysts. And we often see them along the pleural surfaces, along the pulmonary veins, sometimes where the uh, interlobular septum uh, intersects with the pleural surface. And as I go down, you'll see that there's more and more of these cystic spaces. And this is a very characteristic morphology for Bert hogg dubé syndrome. As I mentioned, she had no previous past medical history, so genetic testing was performed, and she did have the mutation in the folliculin gene for Bert hogg dubé syndrome. And just to remind you, uh, Bert hogg dubé syndrome is an autosomal dominant um, disorder that's characterized by formation of renal tumors, predominantly renal cell carcinomas and oncocytomas, lung cysts with this characteristic morphology, and the presence of benign skin lesions, particularly fibrofolliculomas, and those usually develop on the face and upper trunk. Um, not all patients manifest all um, parts of the Bert hogg dubé syndrome. The major risk to morb morbidity and mortality, of course, is there are ren renal cell carcinomas, but also uh, spontaneous pneumothorax. Uh, she will, of course, be um, at risk for a, a recurrent pneumothorax um, because of the presence of these cysts, and she will also undergo um, annual uh, ultrasound for renal tumor screening, as well as genetic counseling for potential family members. The second case I'd like to share is another patient uh, who presented um, to the emergency department with chest pain. Now, this patient has a known diagnosis of Marfan syndrome, and you'll notice on the radiograph uh, that she is uh, rather tall or has a long thorax. Um, we also can see that the pneumothorax on the right here has a somewhat thickened visceral pleura. And when I see that, that usually uh, means to me there's been previous pneumothorax or previous instrumentation, or there's some underlying primary pleural abnormality. This contrasts to the previous case where we saw a nice, sharp, thin visceral pleural line. She also underwent a CT scan uh, for her pneumothorax, and we can see this is before uh, the drain was put in, and there's still some pneumothorax. The underlying lung parenchyma is relatively normal. There's a small loosened area here uh, anteriorly, but if we go up is where the most interesting finding is. I first will point out that there is that visceral pleural thickening. If we look along the surface of the lung, uh, we don't see much until we get to the very top, at which point we see these blebs right here, and in particular this one here at the apex. And so this can be a manifestation of Marfan syndrome. Uh, it can also be seen with Ehlers-Danlos syndrome as well, where they get, um, because of the, the abnormalities in connective tissue, they're prone to forming these blebs. It may also be because of the long thorax. There's um, extra tension on the upper lungs, and they're more prone to developing these. Uh, you also notice here she has some uh, tracheal diverticula, uh, which we can see um, with obstructive lung disease, but potentially I would say with Marfan syndrome as well, just because of the differences in the connective tissues. So she was treated with a, a chest strain and uh, managed conservatively. Of course, again, an increased risk of developing uh, recurrent pneumothorax and treatment might at that point include a, uh, a blebectomy. I will show you her... Um, her skeleton, uh, you can see that the, uh, the thorax has a little bit of an unusual shape. Also in the, in the transverse plane here, we can see sort of this, not the usual, but sort of um, bowed out a little bit more anteriorly. So a case of Marfan syndrome. So two cases of spontaneous pneumothorax presenting in middle-aged women. Uh, other things you might consider include lymphangioliomyomatosis, although it usually presents a little bit earlier. Um, at this age, cat menial pneumothorax would be unlikely, as would just endometriosis. And then you always can consider metastases uh, 
can cause spontaneous pneumothorax. And then most commonly, it's, it's just emphysema to spaces uh, associated with chronic obstructive lung disease. So I want to thank you for your attention, and I will post more cases as I am able. If you have any uh, comments or feedback, please let me know, and I'd be glad to answer any questions as well.